Oh, I'm being scolded. <laughs> After you've been through the woods enough, you become familiar with the different boreal scolding noises. That one was a gray squirrel. It's been a while since I've seen their smaller red squirrel counterparts, but there's tons of them in here. They have a more high-pitched chittery noise. Maybe that's why they're called chickaries in the North Woods. And then, of course, our very own heartbreakingly charming ground squirrel, a tiny cousin to the prairie dog and woodchuck, displaying similar predilections and routines, the chipmunk. That sounds like one is bestirring itself now. This lively mix of high strung, chittering, boreal and ground rodents has to be one of the finer animating aspects of the forest. Yeah, it looks like there's a little hiking group heading off that way. <laughs> the trail turns, skirts along the edge of the center, and makes its way off towards Union. Another trail along Beaver Brook. This is the nature center, the kind of sanctuary headquarters building. This way heads up towards Walpole, they call that may take you to Foxborough. Yeah, this is their original grand project and it's been going strong for better than a hundred years. And I'll be returning here just to cover the place on its own terms repeatedly. So this will be visited at some other time. You can see the solar panels covering any place that has potential insulation. So the trail came from that way. There's a turn after a little while and brings you to the viewless summit of Moose Hill. And over here it heads this way. Or another turkey feather seems to be on the ground. I'm finding a bunch of these today. had now solicited the, <laughs> the information in the uh, holy writ is wrong. The fee is only four bucks, not five. And if you're from Sharon or a member of Audubon, why not? It's free. What are we up to? We got 15 miles of trails, 2,000 acres of habitat, school stuff. Water stuff for the ponds and the pond watersheds. 1916, that's when it started, when World War I was beginning to unfold. So they've been at it for a while. That'll take you eventually to Newburyport. And this'll take you eventually to Duxbury. 
and so we go. Now this is where the change seems to have occurred according to the Holy Writ. And admittedly, I have a version from April 2012. Uh, you're supposed to take Kettle Trail. But as I was coming up, they had swapped out the blazes routing you down Ovenbird Trail, which is just fine with me because it's a killer, charming trail. And the Warner Trail, which comes up from Rhode Island, we've also been running on it. At some point they want to have it tie into Neponset stuff. And I keep an eye on it for time went out. Add to my coverage of that beloved river. And there's our turn. This is a great little area. It's a lot of glacial terrain, some hills and hummocks, some dips and swamps. Seem to be a fair amount of warbler activity when I pass through. Don't know if I'll be continuing now. Okay, yes, the oven bird trail. That is the new way to go. A blaze awaits you. And voila. Come to think of it, I think the funny little bird noise that's in this vicinity <coughs> may well be said oven bird. I seem to recall what makes those noises. Yeah, this area. Lots of high, thin peeps. with one another. rail schedule to Sharon is terrible. <laughs> there aren't many trains and not very many chances to jump out early and switch to a bus. And we have the distraction of the deer trail and a fleeing gray squirrel. But our job is to stick with the oven bird trail.
ever-present mossy stone walls. <clears throat> Wouldn't be New England without that. Fabulous mosaic testimony to wasted effort. <laughs> Species. They don't like that imported scrub. <laughs> so yeah, that's our eventual way to Newberry and more likely Walpole. This is a little side trail that explores a pondish area, probably killer for wetland bird watching. And this is the continuation of our pal, the Ovenbird Trail. 